a brisk 9 degrees this morning in South Korea and we're here for the 2023 Seoul Mobility Show. Now this is the Kintex facility where it's about five times the size of the World Trade Center back home in Pasay. It's huge, it's massive. And what's great about it is it's got all that floor space for a lot of automobiles inside. Now we're here with Kia obviously, so we're gonna show you some highlights from Kia as well as other car manufacturers. But more importantly, let's get inside because I'm friggin' freezing, man, come on. Okay, so first up is Kia, obviously. Now, the highlight is the going to be the EV9, but there are also other products available here, like for example, the EV6, which you guys already know of because it's been launched in Metro Manila. We also have a video of it, uh, and I'm sure that the links are found somewhere down below. But this particular EV6 is actually the GT. Now, you also have bucket seats inside, but the real main difference is the power that this thing puts out. It does have a little shorter range, but the power is ridiculous because it's got 576 horses and over 700 newton meters of torque, which means it can propel this vehicle from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just a hair over 3.2 seconds. That's crazy fast, man. Wow. Yet another product from Kia that I would love to see on our streets is the Kia Nero. This is the EV model and this color is cityscape green. It's quite unique on its own already, but even more unique is this black panel here, which kind of reminds you of like the Audi R8. You see it, right? Anyway, uh, inside this automobile, obviously you've got vegan leather and whatnot, which is going to be uh, predominant with all Kia products from now on. But on this particular crossover, uh, it's pretty cool because this thing can still propel itself from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just a hair over seven seconds, not bad. The range on this automobile is over 400 kilometers for a full charge. Uh, horsepower is just one horsepower above 200, so 201 horses. That's not bad considering the size of the automobile. I like it, it's quite, it's very unique. This would be really cool on Philippine streets, man. I'd love to see it there. What I absolutely love about the Nero is uh, this uh, screen right here. It's very, very well integrated into the dashboard. It doesn't stick out at all like a sore thumb. It's nice and it's something that Jack Reedy also will like because there are physical controls to the air. It's just the temperature, but at least it's something, right? And then you've got your gear shifter down here. It's very, it's, it's, it's nice. It's integrated really, really well. Oh, and the speakers are all Harman Kardon. So bumabayo. <laughs> Nobody uses that term anymore, right? Yeah, I, I understand, I understand. This, on the other hand, is the Nero Plus. Now, it offers the same technology because it is an EV, but it would be nice to see more conventional automobiles like this in our country because to be honest with you, the EV6 is a little bit out there. It's a little bit on the pricey side. This being a bit more conventional, obviously the way that it looks, would also give you a much more affordable price tag. The EV6 being a little harder to sell. This, I do believe, I think it'll be an easy sell. Look at the size of this place. It's huge, man. In BMW, you've got the BMW XM. Now this is basically like the top of the top, the creme de la creme, the high end of their SUVs, much like, let's say for example, the Bentley Bentayga, stuff like that, or the Urus from Lamborghini. This particular automobile, all electric obviously, and get this, the horsepower on this guy is 644 horses. The Newton meters, 800 Newton meters of torque, which means it can propel this thing from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just six seconds. Ridiculous. I, however, am not too sure about the design on the side. What with the, 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 the chrome, it's not chrome, it's like the copper, a bit of copper and the wheels and whatnot. I'm not saying that it's not pretty, it is. Jack likes it, I'm still a little bit off, but what it is is that well, Jack said it right, that somebody needed to do something different. And that's exactly what BMW did. They did something different. And they did something different, really different. I don't even know if that makes sense, but it just looks completely different. Now, also on display is BMW's R18. This particular one, however, is the R18 100 years. So it's like a special edition, but there is a review of the R18 on our Moto Deal channel. Gino has actually put himself on this thing. So I'm sure we'll put the link somewhere down below. This thing is so, it's the length of this, is like over six feet. How does, 
I know I can't drive this, but do you think, how did Gino fit on this, man? It's probably aerodynamic too. Then there's also this, the Mini Vision Urbanaut. It's a concept car, but the weird thing about this automobile is that there's no steering wheel because it's a self-driving automobile, or that's how exactly how it's envisioned. And if you look inside, it's basically like your living room on four wheels. There's even a plant. There's even a plant, that's right, and a mirror. To f There's no, I am i don't know if I'm completely ready yet to be in an automobile without a steering wheel in it. That would make me obsolete. Oh, we don't like this car. We don't like this car at all. And then check this out, look at the wheels. Doesn't it remind you of like a roll of bubble gum? Right? <laughs> In the same vicinity as the BMW, you also get the Mini. Now this is the Mini Electric uh, Resolute Edition. Now what makes it very different is because of the, the color of the stripes up on the hood. You've got the wheels that I'm still not a very big fan of and then color interior that's very, very different. Inside, it actually still looks the same as your conventional minis. It's just that obviously it's electric. I do feel like they missed an opportunity to call this car a Min E. Could be. I think it's a good option for those that want to maintain getting a vehicle that's still very lifestyle, which obviously the Mini definitely is. It's got loads of personality on it, but what want to move into that step of electrification. Oh, and if you're looking to get yourself in the Philippines an electric Mini, be patient. Perhaps next year, I have it under good authority that they are on their way. I just can't tell you exactly when. Just a little patience, because. It's a slow boat. <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Genesis X. It's part of a, a trilogy of designs that they put out and these are the other two cars, right? This is a, the concept vehicle. It's got two line identity up front, which just is really, really gorgeous. The paint is, it's, uh, it resembles like a white crane, the bird itself. It's a convertible, obviously. The interior, it just looks so supple. We can't get too close to it, but the design itself, it's long, it's sleek. It looks like it was shaped to cut through the wind with minimal drag uh, at all. And then the wheels, look at the wheels of this automobile. Those are the most unique wheels I've seen in quite some time. The tires may be not the smartest option on the planet. It is just a concept anyway, but there are no grooves on it. So it's like, it's like slicks on a Formula One automobile. But it is just wow. The wow factor of this automobile is just uh, Amazing. If you think the front is gorgeous, so is the rear. Look at that lip, the lights that wrap around the corner, a diffuser found on the bottom, and then a grill just beneath, the, uh, above the diffuser and uh, just below the bumper that sort of like mimic these. I can't stop talking about these wheels. My goodness, look at them. It's kind of odd how it's a perfect combination of minimalism and opulence all at the same time. It's, I, wow, wow. So at the Porsche booth, this is the Concept 357. It's the 75th anniversary. It's a throwback to the first Porsche uh, 356 that they came out with. I'd like to talk a little bit more about the automobile and show you the interior, the exterior, the car. Obviously there's no headlights because it's a track car and whatnot, but um, the models look kind of scary and I'm scared to approach them. Maybe you're just insecure. I'm very insecure because they're so tall. <laughs> So Mercedes has three cars featured here. You've got the EQE, which is an electric vehicle, obviously. You've got the AMG SL, which is like a V8. And then you've got a V12 in the sense of the Maybach, which is the Virgil Abloh edition, by the way. Now these cars look absolutely great. They look prime and they look like they will actually sell themselves, especially the AMG. They look like they can sell themselves very, very easily, which is a good thing because that means that perhaps Toto now will have the budget for an upgrade. Whoops. This from Hyundai is the N74. Now it's an homage actually to the, the Pony Coupe back in 1974. And you can tell that it's definitely an homage because it's got the shape that's very, very retro. And yet it's also got a lot of 
much future tech to it, uh, which, which you would think that isn't the EV engine and of course the interior. But what gives it away is the, uh, the, the tech is, is, is the, the aerodynamic wheels as most electric vehicles, ha vehicles have. What I can't deny, however, is that when you look at the automobile, you can't help but think that it kind of resembles the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Ain't it? You, I mean, you can see it, right? It's not just me. Jack, is it just me or do you see it too? You do, you do see it. Okay, I thought I was losing my mind. So the big reveal with Hyundai is this, the Sonata. And as you can tell, there's definitely been a very big facelift on it, including this uh, DRL that stretches the entire width of the car. Now, it's not an electric vehicle. What it is, is actually it's an internal combustion vehicle with a 2.5 liter engine. That's one option. Another option is that it's also a 1.6 with a turbocharged or a two liter with a hybrid. This N line is actually the, 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 the big engine. It's a 2.5 liter engine with a turbocharger now it's not moving right now obviously we're inside the car show but the shape of this automobile coupled with the color makes it really look damn fast doesn't it this is the bigger brother of the ionic 5 this is the ionic 6 now although they are siblings it couldn't be more different from the Ionic 5 because this is definitely a rounder shape compared to the more cube shape of the Ionic 5. And that's pretty cool right there. It's there's a robot that's that's actually going to plug it in right now. That's that's actually very trippy. When it's coming to our shores, I have no idea, but it is. It will most definitely come to our shores. Again, at the rear, it's much rounder, definitely, but it still has the, the cube lights, which is it's reminiscent of the Ionic 5, really. And, and the Staria, yeah, yeah, obviously. It's got, it's got a really nice fastback appeal to it, huh? It's nice. And the big red lights, or the, those could be the reflectors at the bottom. I'd love to be able to enter, but I think the security will tackle me. No, the, the robot will kill you. The robot, like in, the robot will probably... Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. And of course, the highlight of the show, which is the global reveal of the EV9, which came out first in 2021 at the LA Motor Show. And is now, this is like the production model. And you've got stuff like, you, uh, there's a variant that's a two-wheel drive, there's a four-wheel drive option, there's a seven-seater, there's a six-seater. But anyway, more information on that because we actually have a video specifically just for the EV9. So we'd like to say thanks to Kia for bringing us along on this tour of the 2023 Seoul Mobility Show. We had a great time. Do subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos because we travel and create these videos just for you guys. See you soon.